One, zero, ignition, lift off, lift off, 30 minutes after the hour. I am Edgar Mitchell. When I was 41, I walked on the moon. But walking on the moon is only one part of my career. Two years later, I was in a scientific laboratory investigating a rather amazing individual, Uri Geller. Uri's ability to perform amazing feats of mental wizardry is known the world over. Uri is not a magician. He is using capabilities that we all have and can develop with exercise and practice. You will get a chance to practice with Uri at the end of this film. She packed my bags last night, free flight. Zero hour, 9 a.m. And I'm gonna be high as a kite by then. I miss the earth so much I miss my wife It's lonely out in space On such a timeless flight And I think it's gonna be Touchdown brings me round again to find I'm not the man they think I am at home Oh no, no, no I'm a man Rocket man yourself. Thank you, Mother. It's Mushroom, your favorite. So you started without me. And finished without you. Extra guard duty. That new officer has got it in for me. Oh, I thought you had kissed and made up. Where did you get that ring from? Where did he get it? Did you give it to him? 
where would I find the money for a silver ring? If Roy said he found it, then he found it. You stole it. Admit it. I didn't. I... You stole it! Thank you. You stole the Bible from the old classmate. If you brought some money home, instead of squandering it on your women, he'd have a Bible of his own. Where did you get that ring? I... I made it for a bullet. Get it better than that. It's true. You're a liar. What are you? Stand up. Uri, how many more times? Your exam papers are exactly the same as Yossi's. You've been copying again. No, I haven't, miss. I swear. You even copied his mistakes. Explain that. Well, whenever I got stuck, miss, I just looked at the back of his head and I could see what he was thinking, as scared as if it was chalked on the blackboard. Very well. Look at the back of my head and draw on the blackboard what I'm thinking. And no peeping. Come along, Guri. We haven't got all day. Now, what have I drawn on this piece of paper? Come along, smarty pants. Everyone in the class knows but you. That's enough of your insolence. You shall stay in after school. And you're not to go home until the hands of that clock reach half past four. Where on earth do you think you're going, Uri Geller? I'm going home, miss. So there was an explosion and and there was the priest from my old school in Cyprus and then a whole lot of stuff here in Tel Aviv before the divorce and stop dreaming. It's time to rise and shine. Have you been out all night again? Oh come on, Uri, I have a lot to do. Well soon you'll be able to give up that sewing machine for good. Yes. As soon as you get a regular job. Well, today I have two jobs. And the first one is with, well, guess who? How should I know? Come on, guess. Not Tara. Yeah. Now, don't get any ideas. Nights in white satin Never reaching the end Letters I've written Never meaning to send Beauty I'd always miss With these eyes okay, okay, before Okay, again, it's a wrap up before you so wonderful, wonderful Just so great, I'm so pleased Wonderful Bye Thank you, darlings That was divine a lovely couple. When are you going to make it legal? Oh, we're just good friends. Ah, oh, don't leave it too late or else someone else will grab her. Can you put it over there, honey? Can I give you a lift or are you going to risk your reputation with that pile of bent metal over there? <laughs> I brought a picnic, remember? Roasting nicely. You're welcome to join us. 
No, thank you. I prefer my champagne chilled. Oh, I, f I forgot the Cokes in the car. Could you go get them? Mm. Ori, she's a good girl. Treat her well. Remember, she's the one who got you into this business. And I'm grateful. Though I believe there are better things in life than being a male model. <laughs> Don't knock it. The pay is good, and you get your picture in the paper. A little free publicity never hurt anyone. And from what I hear, you need it. What do you mean? Oh, come on, Ori. Everyone knows you're a whiz at bending teaspoons. But it's about time you graduated into bending iron bars with your bare hands. <laughs> Everyone loves a strong man. That'd be a real macho act. Madge, have you ever seen my act? Yeah, sure. I saw it a couple times on TV. And what did you think? Well, I was impressed at first. Second time, I guessed it was all gimmicks, you know, a sleight of hands like Houdini. And what if I was to tell you there's no trickery? It was all for real. What would you say then? <laughs> I'd say bullshit. Bye, Madge. Bye. No, I'm not tired. Well, yes, I am. I'm tired of everyone writing me off as a phony. I thought Madge believed in me. She believes in you as a model. Otherwise, she wouldn't feature in a magazine all the time. Cheer up. OK, let's take a photo. Uh, how's this? Is this good? Yeah, go on, have fun. Um, you still have the lens cap on, though. Hold it, hold it, hold it. That's enough photos for one day. Just one more. One more of us together. Ah! Put on a self-timer. Of course. The camera fell. Oh! <laughs> Sharon made modeling a little more fun for Uri. Well, maybe a lot more. My name is Shippy, but unlike Sharon, I was to have a profound effect on Uri's life. Strange and powerful forces were now at work, which were going to change Uri's existence forever. He didn't know it, but that night, when he went on stage for his demonstration, Uri was going to resort to trickery for the first time in his life. And unfortunately, I played a major role in the deception. Park as close as you can. I'll see you inside. Hey, I was getting worried here. You're running late, Uri. Oh, yeah, how would you know? Usually at the box office when I come in. What's the problem? That's the problem. The box office. You're gonna be playing to a lot of empty seats tonight, kid. What do you mean? This has always been one of our best dates. Last year we were a sellout. What's going on? Overexposure? Why should people leave their homes and pay good money to see a show they've seen a dozen times already on TV. I don't know, you tell me. You're the manager. You're the one that booked the fucking theater. I don't know, maybe, maybe they want to be there when I have that mental blackout and the whole show just falls apart. Wait, uh, don't even think it. Ori, we need new material. It's as simple as that. Oh yeah? So what do you suggest? I ask everyone to bring back their bent spoons and I straighten them out again? It's the telepathy thing. It's great. It's really great and almost always works. But some people complain that it's a bit too slow. Now this is new. It's novel, guaranteed 100%. And best of all, it's quick. It's as quick as you like to make it. I'm listening. Okay. You're on stage, right? You ask them to concentrate on a license plate number of the cars. You close your eyes. Boom, a number comes into your head. You're thinking, you're thinking, you're thinking. And exactly what am I thinking about? 
thinking about this little piece of paper and what's written on it. And what's written on it? The car number plates? The car number plates and exactly where they're sitting in the audience. It's terrific. Look, there's only a dozen or so. You've been busy. Just keeping my eyes open. Come on, kid, what harm can it do? You can memorize that in a minute. 30 seconds. Don't touch it, Uri. Get out. Get out! What's your name? I'm called Shippy. Shippy Strang. Shippy. Uh, I'd like you to assist me with the next part of the demonstration, OK? Sure. Can you see through this handkerchief? No. Nope. Not a thing, right? Right. OK, I want you to bind it around my eyes. OK. Really tight. OK. OK? Just so I can't see a thing. OK. Now, I want you to choose a girl from the audience, any girl you want, OK? And I want her to come up on the stage. And just choose and make it fast, OK? OK. Have you chosen her? Yes, she's on the way. Oh, I hear her. She's on the stage. OK, now, Shippy, I want to see her through your eyes. Now, project her to me. OK, uh, she's, she's blonde, right? Yeah. Now, I'm going to tell you what she's wearing. It's a yellow dress. That's right. Now, wait, she has, it has sort of a pattern on it. Um, it's dots. It's red, red spots on it, right? Yeah. OK. Exactly, yes. Thank you. And now, if you want, I can tell you the color of your panties. <laughs> She's not wearing any. <laughs> Dream on, Sergeant. Dream on. Sergeant Major to you, sonny boy. <laughs> yeah, I'm right. OK, so let me introduce you to Shippy Strang, the man that made it so easy for me to see you. Hi. OK, thank you very much. <laughs> And now I want everyone to bring your broken watches up here on the stage. No, just wait here for a second. Just pass your watches down to me. Come on, I'm sure some of you has got a watch that isn't working. I had a broken watch, but you made it go last time. Me too. How about something new, Ori? What about my mother-in-law? Can you make her go too? <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Uh, well, if I've mended every watch in Tel Aviv, I'm sure there's still a few straight spoons in town. No, they're all bent like you. <laughs> I see we have a comedian in the audience. Maybe you'd like to come up here and tell a few jokes or something. Uh, well, what I'm going to do now is something completely new. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you drove here tonight. Uh, I want you to think um. of your car number. Yes, the lady of the black underwear. I have a broken watch. My mother gave it to me, and I keep it as a memento. I'd love it if you can make it work again. How can I refuse? Uh, just tell me, what's your name? Um, my name is Hannah. Right, Hannah. What do I want to ask? Ask for her surname. Wh why should I ask that? Why don't you want to ask her? Why should I ask her? Her name is none of your business. What are you trying to hide? Excuse me, sir. If you're dissatisfied with the demonstration, perhaps you should leave. You're disturbing the audience. For God's sakes, just give him your name. I don't see what my name has got to do with it. Look, the lady doesn't want to give her name, OK? It's not OK, and I'll tell you why. It's because her name is Strong. She's the sister of your other accomplice. This is set up. You're a faker, Gala. I want my money back. That's not it true. I've never matter. seen these people before in my life. Liar! Get off the stage. I suggest you go quietly before I evict you myself, Come man. Here. You and whose army? The fact is, the man was right. So while my sister helped drag Uri off the stage, I tried to hold off the crowd. Much to my surprise, Uri's father came to our rescue. And so we did what anyone would do when faced with overwhelming odds. We ran. I should have said my full name right away. Then you could have sent me back or whatever. 
No, I never should have picked you in the first place. Forget it. Yes, forget it. You were doing him a favor. Which means you were saving me from myself. They saved you from the mob. That mob's my public. You're better off without them. And that creepy manager. Yeah, well, without them, I'm finished. Broke. Kaput. There's always the modeling. That's peanuts. Well, looks like I'm here for life. Listen, I'd invite you up for a drink, but um, my mom's a real light sleeper, so Sharon will take you home. All right, Sharon? You can drop the car if you're in the morning or something. Good night. Seeing Uri walk off so depressed made me feel even worse. I felt it was all my fault, and I had to make it up to him. So I spent the rest of the night fixing Uri's car. I also used the night to come up with a plan. What the hell? Hey, just polishing up your image. You think it a little tarnished after last night? Okay, who are you and what do you want? I'm nobody, and I'd like to be your manager. Why? You need someone to look after you. And what are you, a trained nurse? A chauffeur, maybe? You're certainly not a professional manager. No, but I could be all of those things. So you have no real experience then? Listen, you really did a great job on the car, but if that's your only qualification, I'm afraid I'm gonna have to pass. No, wait. Uh, I do have one big qualification that uh, might interest you. Telepathy. Yeah. You know, sometimes I just seem to know what you're thinking, even before you do. Well, that could be pretty embarrassing. Especially when your sister's around. Oh, don't worry, she likes you too. Well, we're obviously on the same wavelength, but there's more to it than that. Sure there is, but why not give it a try? What have you got to lose? Well, certainly not my reputation, huh? Yeah. We blew that last night. So when do we start? Tomorrow night, if I can fix it with a boss. Yeah, keep talking. Okay, me and Hannah work at this place called the Zorba, and they're always looking for class acts. The Zorba. Hmm, well, I guess I better brush up on my belly dancing. Well, it's a start. Come on, gentlemen. Surely there's one of you here tonight playing hooky from Weight Watchers Anonymous? You, sir, how about you? Dropped it! I'm saving that for my encore. I wouldn't mind losing a few kilos. And step over here, madam, and experience what it feels like to be as light as a feather, as free as a bird, and please take a perch. Now, I need three volunteers to help make our bird of paradise fly. <laughs> Come on, surely there are a few bird lovers amongst you. How about you, sir, the lady's husband? The last time I lifted her was over the threshold 20 years ago. And in those days, I didn't need three other guys to give me a hand. And these two, although Uri didn't know it, had come from the United States just to see him. And they were about to change his life forever. Thank you. Now, we're all strangers, I take it. We've never met before tonight, right? Right. Now we're gonna try and lift this lovely lady right up to the ceiling. Ready? One, two, three, go! Impossible. But let's try again, this time using all our combined energies. So place your hand above mine, alternately. Put your hand. You, madam, too. No, just one hand. Now me again. Okay, there we are. Now we're gonna take our hands away, one after the other, very quickly, in order of descent. And then on the count of three, lift her in the air. Go! One, two, three. Oh, 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 oh look at that. Oh, God. Oh, 
Oh my God. Oh, oh that God, you that. did it. Oh, Thank God. you very no. much. You can sit down. Great. Thanks a lot. Good night, everyone. Oh, boy. Thank you. Really appreciate your help. Not at all. I haven't had so much fun in years. Would you like to join us for a drink? Mm, I don't think the boss would be too happy with that. Well, what the hell? I could use a drink after that little number. It's my first night here. It was a tough audience you had tonight. Oh, yeah. By the way, my name's Joe Hartman. This is Kitty. Pleased to meet you. You really got me out of a hole back there. We used to do that trick at parties when I was a child. Kitty was rather hoping to see you bend a spoon. Having schlepped 10,000 miles to catch your act. Well, I'm afraid you're gonna have to be patient. I'm saving the spoon bending for the three o'clock show. I honestly don't think I could contain my excitement that long. Will you excuse me? Would you like me to get your cab? Sure, the doorman will manage, darling. I can bend the spoon any old time. She doesn't have to wave it off. Don't worry. There'll be plenty of other opportunities. Something's up. Go see what's going on. I don't think I'm your man. I'm afraid you had a wasted journey. I know this isn't much of a job, but it's better than being a human guinea pig. I was rather hoping you'd look upon it as a partnership. Friend of yours? No. If it were found that the human mind had the power to say, deflect the needle of a compass by even a tenth of a degree, then they'd have to reevaluate the law of physics, my friend. Well, we'd better start now. That's easy. Good. Then may I suggest that uh, you come to our apartment at the Sheraton Hotel tomorrow morning, say 11 o'clock? That will give you time to rest and me time to make my preparation. I wonder if you could um, pay the bill for me. Give the waiter 12 and a half percent. I really must be going. Kitty has a bit of a sleep problem. So, room 504 tomorrow morning. You can bring me the change then. He's meeting him tomorrow. He looked as if he was propositioning you. Well, in a way he was. My fame's even reached America. He's a scientist, an inventor studying parapsychology or something. Wants me to be his partner. I mean, he finally tracked me down. He gave me this to sell the bill. Twelve and a half percent for you. So what are you gonna do? Well, he invited me to his hotel tomorrow. Do you wanna come? You bet. He sure changed me. When I say go, you try to deflect the compass needle in a clockwise direction. One, two, three, go. 2.3 seconds. 5.9 seconds. Compass needle moves seven degrees in an anti-clockwise direction. Would you like to try again? What for? Well, we settled for a clockwise direction. So, wasn't it enough for you that I managed to move the needle at all? Could you move the needle? Uh, no, no, I'm sure I couldn't. I mean, it was a truly extraordinary phenomenon. Um, but if you couldn't... It wasn't that I couldn't. I didn't want to. I thought you promised last night that I wouldn't be a human guinea pig, that we'd be partners, right? Right. So, partner, I have a mind of my own. And it chose the other direction, okay? Hey, guys, let's not get controversial. It's just that I don't like being ordered about. I had enough of that in the army. All right, all right. Uh, next time I consult you. No problem. Well, that was quite extraordinary. Um, what would you like to do now? Okay, Shippy, what's next? Well, you haven't bent any spoons so far today. Okay, find me a spoon. Um, perhaps we'd better leave that till later. Kitty'd never forgive me if she missed that. She came 10,000 miles to see me bend a spoon. Okay, uh, let's try bending something else, like, um, I don't know, like, like... A jet of water? Water? Water. Uh, well, I've bent most things, but never water. Then give it a try. Sure. Bathroom's over here. 
Oh! Sorry, darling. Um, we were going to use the bath for an experiment. Don't mind me. Go right ahead and experiment. No, no, don't disturb yourself. Um, I thought you were out jogging. I got back. Okay, uh, see you later. Um, anything you need? Oh, mm, I saw a really chic little suit in one of the stores. Very well, dear. Um, have a seat, have a seat. Yes, Kitty's very body conscious. Every time we arrive in a place, she's off jogging. <laughs> Around the nearest shopping mall. Yeah, it's her way of window shopping. Have you ever tried moving an object by teleportation? Uh, no. Can't say that I have. Would you like to try? Sure. What do you need moving? I suppose you could try moving Kitty out of the bathroom. Just kidding. How about this? Yeah, sure, why not? Bathroom's free. Thank you, dear. I'm sorry. We'll try it anyway. It's incredible. The cartridge is gone. Well, maybe if I hadn't been interrupted... I wonder if an outside agency is at work here. Well, who knows? So, what's next? Hey, let's try bending that jet of water while the bathroom is free. Oh, do you have to do it now? I'm sorry, but I'm off duty at one o'clock, and it's nearly that now, so... Forget it. Yeah, forget it. Hey! I know something we can bend. So nice. Are you quite finished? Yes. Well, I gotta get back to work or the boss is just gonna kill me. Nice meeting you, Dr. Hartman. Really fun. See you later, Rory. Mm. If we're to take these experiments seriously, Mr. Geller, they must be conducted under strict laboratory conditions. Well, sure. If there's a lab at my old school, we might be able to use that. I was thinking more of my own workplace, the uh, Stanton Research Institute in California. Yep. It's a Sharon. Shall I tell her to call back? Mm. No, I'd better take it. Yeah. Wait, wait, slow down. Ah, uh, okay. Okay, I'll be right down. I'll be right down. Uh, I'm sorry, she's, uh... She's real upset. Uh, she's downstairs in the lobby. I think I better see her. I'll call you, okay? Uh, as soon as I can. Darling? Yes, darling? Darling, have you been at my makeup again? Why, darling? Is there something missing? On the contrary. I seem to have acquired a new eyebrow pencil. It's the missing cartridge. What's the matter? I had to see you. Your mother didn't want to tell me where you were. Didn't want me mad at her. I'm not mad at anyone, but what is it? I thought you should see these. It's the picnic. I mean, you had me worried for a minute. What's the rush? Did you drag me down here just to see these? I mean, most of them are out of focus anyway. No, those are the ones I took with the lens cap on. See the difference? That's incredible. It's impossible. Keep looking. What's this? Do you remember when the camera fell off the swing? Yeah, it took a picture of the sky. And something else. Uri, it's spooky. Come on, I have to show this to Joe. I wait for you here. No, you're living proof they're not fakes. 
3724. 125.06. That's the latitude and longitude of the Stanton Research Institute. There is an outside agency at work here guiding us. That was Schleppy with a message from Yuri. Seems they've both been fired. Can't say I'm surprised. Wonderful. Then it hasn't been a wasted journey. I promised you you'd see spoon bending, and so you shall. In the privacy of your own home. That's one command performance I could do without. You're never, never gonna, gonna believe this! this. Synchronicity. Did you say UFO? At last, when Uri is finally being recognized for the truthfulness of his powers, the doubters came back into his life, this time in the person of his father. <laughs> I knew I'd seen it before somewhere. <laughs> What are you doing here? Checking out your folks. Oh. <laughs> Still up to your little tricks, son. Huh? Our son is going to America. On your way out, you can say goodbye to him. He'll be back. They'll see through him over there, same as they did here. Now, I suppose you want to go in away, president. Eh? <laughs> well, yeah, actually. It's hanging around your neck. Very well, sonny boy. Now, let's put it where it belongs. I'm sorry, Sharon, but he had no right to do that. You didn't tell me you were going to America. Well, it's just only been decided. Take me with you. I can't. I'm broke. Anyways, what were you doing with him? I needed to speak to somebody else about these photos. Someone normal, level-headed. How was I to know he'd get drunk and insist on coming here? Sharon. Yes. I'd really like to take those photos with me to America. If anyone ever comes across the other half of this ring, I'd really like it back someday. Oh, come on. Now it's our turn to get lit up. America. 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 Astronaut Edgar Mitchell had urged Professor Hartman and Kitty to witness Uri's powers in person, and the result was that Uri and I went to America and moved in with them. They both made us feel very much at home. Kitty is a terrific cook, even though she made us dress for dinner in Joe's old tuxedos. And every night she played Chopin for us. What more could we want? Every day Joe took Uri over to the research institute to conduct experiments. They explored everything, from telepathy to physics. One thing that really impressed the scientists was Uri's ability to cause an object to change its weight. Since I was not involved in the experiments themselves, I was planning how Uri and I could make some money. That is, when I wasn't digging in the garden. When Uri first walked past the garden, he'd received strong vibes that there was an underground spring there, and I decided to find it. I don't think Joe minded, because it did keep me out of his hair. And Uri, 
When he wasn't at the institute, he was writing letter after letter to Hannah, which he insisted on reading to me before he mailed them. Love, Uri. Okay? Hmm. Very touching. But isn't it addressed to the wrong girl? I thought Sharon was the one you were sweet on. Mm, it's over. I treat her real bad. I bet you treat all your women bad. Yeah, but I treat her real bad. I wrote her a few letters, you know, say I'm sorry and... No reply. Yeah. No. Mm -hmm. But Hannah's different. I, I feel good about her. Yeah. You should see what she wrote about you. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Come on, come on, come on. That's getting yucky. Let's get out of here and get laid. Sure. With no car, no money, no nothing. I thought you were taking care of that. I'm working on it. Hey, turn that down. You want to wake up the old folks? Too bad they lead such a quiet life, huh? We should have brought the boys. No, baby, they only did classical. Hi, Greta. Where is Zuri? He's in the lab next door. Ship, you can't go in there. They're in the middle of an experiment. You'll have to wait. What is this? A seance? Uri is attempting to teleport a pocket watch locked in that case under Dr. Hartman's feet. How long have they been at it? About 15 minutes. Come on, Uri. Come on. This can't wait. You gotta hear this. So just do it. Come on. Can it beat that? Shippy, what's got into you? We're in the middle of an experiment, for Christ's sake. Um, I just had some important news to tell Uri, so... Um... And what is this news that's so important that it can jeopardize a unique experiment of the highest magnitude, involving, amongst other things, the restructuring of the atom? Well, um, I just got Uri a spot on the Don Drake talk show. Hey! It could be back in here. My grandfather gave me this. Sorry, everyone. Sorry. Um, if you need me, I guess you know where to find me. Hey, Shippy. Got wet feet yet? No, but my shirt is kind of damp. I think we both earned a couple of beers today. What do you say, Joe? Don't forget to wipe your feet. And don't let the dog inside. You know how Kitty hates animals about the house. Even though things were going well, living with Uri's powers did present some problems. Especially for Joe's wife. Oh, Daddy been spoiling him again. Now, Mummy must spoil him too, or he'll start to get a complex. Come along, darling. Yeah. Let Mummy get him something really nice before she goes out. Dinner's in the kitchen. She wouldn't do a thing like that, would she? You never know with Kitty. She can be most terribly kind to animals. Well, as we're both in the doghouse, I'll go join the dog. Thank you. 
Tell me something, Joe. Does Kitty usually feed the dog on Chateaubriand with sprouts, glazed carrots, New Jersey potatoes, and petit pois? Most emphatically not. That's what I figured. Well, what do you suppose we do now? Well, we can draw straws to see who cleans up the vomit. <laughs> That's not very funny, young man. And frankly, I'm beginning to find your general high spirit somewhat of a strain. Yeah, and I'm finding it a bit of a strain being confined to barracks like this. Why can't we just go out once in a while? Because we're trying to harness Uri's energies, which you would dissipate with your TV shows, get rich quick schemes, and gadding about. Well, what do you think, Uri? I think I'll go home. Wait, 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 what about me Piggy in the middle? Wait, wait, what about the TV show? Yeah, we'll talk about the, the TV show. Wait a minute. Maybe you're putting too much trust in this TV show. What if nothing happens and I turn out to be a complete flop? After all, it doesn't happen every time. Not even in the lab where there are no distractions. And after a month's solid work, are we any the wiser of to where my powers come from? Is it, is it from me or is it through me? Now aren't we all becoming just a bit blasé? Not five minutes ago, a hundred-pound dog just teleported through a brick wall. Probably for the first time in the history of mankind, and what do you do? Run in phone Reuters and every other news agency in the world? No, you're just worried about his muddy paws on the sofa. You're becoming paranoid, my friend. Maybe we are all becoming paranoid. Maybe it's a mass hallucination. Maybe there's no dog here at all. Here, putty, 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 putty. Nice putty cat. I wish you'd stop doing that. You're confusing the poor animal. I don't know about you guys, but I think we've been hit by an interplanetary poltergeist. I'd say it's the work of some cosmic clown. Making a big cosmic joke! I reserve judgment. I think it's probably time for those beers we were talking about. We were all astonished at the ferocity of Uri's powers on the objects in the room. I think it scared Joe almost as much as it did me. But the real fear didn't come until the next day, when the government started to take an interest in Uri. Can I help you, gentlemen? Who's in charge here? I am. What can I do for you? Stop whatever you're doing and make it fast. What seems to be the problem? Some highly classified material has just been erased from our computers. And we have reason to believe the source of the malfunction is located in this area. I go further than that, Captain. It's coming from this lab here. The young man you see in the Faraday cage is trying to erase the taped image displayed on the left-hand monitor. The other is simply a close circuit picture of the same subject. Care to have a go? Just press the buzzer. In the interest of national security, I order you to shut down this facility immediately. On whose authority? On the authority of the United States government. So there I was, sitting in the Faraday cage, like a stupid chimpanzee, and suddenly the lights went out. What's a Faraday cage? Oh, uh, it's a cage of wire mesh that blocks out the radio waves and, and the magnetic forces. Oh, fuck the Faraday cage. What I still can't understand is why you let them take him away. I already told you. I was all wired up, and by the time I got to the office, he was gone. And Greta said not to worry and not to wait dinner. He'd phone. Synchronicity. Hello? Thank God. You sure? You sure? All right, I promise. He said not to worry, he's already eaten and he'll be home soon. Is that all he said? Yes, he was in a hurry. Well, 
I don't know about you, but uh, I could really use a little something to mellow me out. Brandy? Um, well, I was thinking of something a little more soulful. Chopin. This along with the soup plates. I nearly put it in the dishwasher. If this is some sort of joke, it's ill timed and inappropriate. It's my joke. Halloween's over, Shippy. Show a little respect. That's Chopin's death mask. <sighs> it, it seems fine. It was here on the piano where it always is. You touched it. Um, I did. You knew you did. Uh, Shippy must have splashed some water on it. I'd like you to leave here. I don't think I need to explain why. No, I quite understand. We'll leave first thing tomorrow morning. I'd rather you left now. But what about Joe? It's because of you that Joe's in this mess. OK. So why don't you just point me to the nearest park bench, then? Better still, I'll advance you some money for a hotel and room for a cab. Fine. I'll break the news gently to ship you and we'll pack our stuff. No, you can collect them tomorrow. Hey, man, what's going on here? Is it safe to come back in? Grab your coat. We're out of here. Say hello to Joe for us. Sorry, I never got to finish the well. Um, take us to the nearest hotel. Listen, you have $100 to spend, including cab fare and a couple of high-class hookers. Last of the big spenders, huh? The sky's the limit. I know just the place. Waterbeds, adult movies, closed-circuit TV, as much booze as you can handle, huh? And even some change left over? You bet. What'd I tell you? The American dream came true. Yeah, and all for a hundred dollars, huh? Dream on. Just imagine the sleazy flea pit he's taking us to. Yeah. Well, at least we're out of the house. Yeah. Say, what was it with you two? The Chopin death mask? Yeah? It was weeping. I didn't think her plane was that bad. Shippy, this is no joke. They were real tears, believe me. Well, hey, we could have a real marketable commodity here for music students. Your favorite composer. Every time you strike a bum note, he'd burst into tears. And how about weeping Madonnas for sinning nuns? That's a good one, Uri. Thank you. That's all we need. One big money spinner. I can't believe this. I just made the dead Chopin weep, and all you can think about is making a buck. So? 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 so you want to make money? Yeah. Yeah? 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 Yeah. Okay, we'll make money. Driver, how far to Las Vegas? About a thousand miles. Take us there. Ladies and gentlemen, the table is open. Place your bets. Four. Oh, okay. We'll get him next time. You're not bidding? Not this time. How about you? No, I only bid uncertainties. Oh, then stick around. Okay. Okay. Winning number five red. No wins. Oh. Come on, come on, come on. Ladies and gentlemen, the table is open. Place your bets. Twenty-five. Yes. Everything on twenty-five. Okay. Don't worry. Winning number 25. Yes! Yes! <laughs> Telephone call for you, Mr. Keller. It's urgent. But nobody knows I'm here. Who's calling? They didn't say, sir. I think you better take that call. If you say so. Ships, 
Get the chips. This way, please. Hello? Hello? That's odd. There's no reply. Just the sound of a bell. Hey, it sounds like an alarm bell. I think someone's trying to tell you guys something. Hey, what's going on? Uh, uh, Shippy, I think it's time we cash in our chips. Yeah, you better what? stick with me. There's sore losers here, but they'll never harm a lady. Can I give you guys a ride? Ah, whoa! Can I take the wheel? I always wanted to drive a jukebox. I can't get it started. Whoa. Maybe we should change places. Some kiss. Hey, look, a twenty dollar bill. What are you doing? Fishing for cab fare. She almost cleans us out. Let's go. Say, we should call Kitty, see if Joe got back all right. Yeah, we can do it after the show. If we get there on time. Wait, what show? The Don Drake show. What, you forgot about it? Oh, man, I'm totally out of it. Say, Shippy, do they usually have tornadoes in California at this time of year? <laughs> I believe Uri's powers had rebelled because he'd used them to win at the roulette table. And that meant the TV show became our last chance for survival. My demonstrations are interesting and entertaining, but only superficial. They represent something much deeper, some sort of uh, fantastic intelligence, perhaps, that's trying to communicate with us. And it knows it has the capacity to get through to us if we only tune into the right wavelength. Now. Excuse me if this sounds arrogant, but I believe that I'm tuned to this cosmic connection. Why? I don't know. But I welcome occasions like this, because it gives me the opportunity to also put others in touch with forces outside themselves. And just what is this force or intelligence trying to communicate, Mr. Geller? Well, I don't know for sure, but uh, peace and harmony, I guess. And judging from what happened to me this morning, uh, it's a warning not to put our trust in material things alone. Mr. Geller, I uh, hear you've only recently arrived here from Israel. You're probably not aware of a peace movement that has its roots here in California called Flower Power. Now, it's penniless disciples. They preach free love. They smoke dope all day long. Is that what you're advocating, Mr. Geller? Love has to be better than conflict. Make love, not war. Draft beer, not people is the hippie credo. That sounds good to me. Mr. Keller, you'd have us give up our nuclear capability, be at the mercy of communist Russia and a nuclear holocaust? Is that what you want? I came here to bend spoons, Mr. Drake, not start a third world war. And that sounds very like the cue to say, we're running out of time, so bring out those timepieces. Now is the time to take all those broken clocks and watches you've been hoarding in your drawers and closets for years and hold on to them tightly for in half a sec. Uri will be doing what he made him a household word throughout Israel for many years. That's right, bending time. It's all yours, Uri. Now, as Mr. Drake said, it's time to harness all our collective energies. Now, believe it or not, but we can use them to bring all this dead metal to active life again. So, listen. Not a sound. But we can change that by switching on the untapped power you have in there. And all you have to do is say, one, two, three, work. <laughs> yes, it's as easy as that, if you mean it. And you really have to mean it. Because if not, I may as well just pack my things and we can call it a day. Oh, worry. I'm sure they're as ready as they'll ever be. I told them over a week ago all about you. Even some of our studio audience has brought their watches with them. Just hold them up for me so I can see.
Right, folks? Thanks. Come on, Ori, it's a 60-minute show. I don't have all day. Okay, people, let's do this. Now, I'm going to say one, two, three, work. And the idea is that we all say work together and really mean it. So I want you to put everything else out of your mind except the will to make this machinery work. Now, are you ready? Please, people, I want absolute quiet. Okay, that's better. So here we go. One, two, three, work! work. Folks, we're running out of time. Unless you take it seriously, you're gonna blow it. Even if Mr. Geller here, the perfect excuse for nothing to happen. So please, come on. Let's give old Ori here the benefit of the doubt. Ori had precisely one and a half minutes to work a miracle. Okay, people. Don't be beaten by the clock. Don't be a slave to time. You can do this. So are you ready? Yeah! Okay. Now, if everyone at home is ready, we're gonna give it one more try. One, two, three, work! at home, why don't you give us a call and tell us how you got on in our battle against time. This is Don Drake saying I'll see you tomorrow morning when my guest will be controversial film director on Fonte Rible, Kenny Russell. <laughs> Man, how was it? It was good. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, did Joe get back yet? No, but Kitty was just going out to pick him up. He should be home any time now. Okay, great. So let's get a cab and maybe buy a few beers on the way, okay? First of all, I have to pick, pick up the... Excuse me, Mr. Geller, can I bother you for a minute? I'm Ernie Goodman of the U.S. Special Research Facility at El Puerto. Yes, what is it? Yeah, what do you want? An endorsement? One of our top neurologists, Dr. Carl Zwemmer, is leaving the country tonight and is very keen to involve you in a simple experiment before his departure. What sort of... We're too uh, busy, I'm afraid. Thank you. Some of the time. It would only take a few minutes. I'm sorry, sir. We really do have to go. Shippy Strang, personal manager to Uri Geller. Some of the time, maybe. Thank you. We'd be happy to negotiate a reasonable fee. What do you call reasonable? $2,000. Double it, and it's a deal. Very well, Mr. Strang. Let's shake on 4000 Okay. Well, so when do we start? There's a car waiting outside. It'll stay with you as long as you need it. Uh, where is this El Puerto? Uh, you live at Stanton, I believe. Well, it's almost on the way. You could be home in a couple of hours. Great. I'll tell Kitty to fix a late lunch. Aren't you coming with us? No, you go ahead. I've got to collect our check for the show. See ya. Okay, see ya. Oh, and don't forget, Mr. Goodman. It's strictly cash on delivery. The thing is, I should have never left Uri's side. It was my job to be with him, to protect him, to give him advice. But I trusted the army, and that was a mistake. I should have been there to stop their villainous intentions. But I wasn't, and I blame myself for the trouble Uri found himself in. I'm always willing to try. It's not far. Sergeant Geller, reporting for duty. 
Uri is an old army man. Uh, ex-army man, please. I am an old army man myself. Hello. And this is my assistant, Lieutenant Bubbles Jokes. I hear you were a paratrooper. Until I was medically discharged. Wounded? You ready to go? It must have taken guts. Now the formalities are over, I'll take my leave. Uh, this man will escort you to your car just as soon as the experiment is over. Bon voyage, Doctor. Thank you, Captain. Ah, regards to Heinrich. Mr. Geller, I know you are in a hurry and I do not want to waste your time. So would you please follow me? It's only a simple precaution. <laughs> Just imagine you're at the dentist. Now, we don't want to be accused of cheating, now, do we? Certainly not. I hope you're wearing that. <laughs> this is the last word in sensory deprivation systems, with all the usual EG programming incorporated in the transmitter right here. It's quite painless, I assure you. Well, if I'm not going to get a general anesthetic, Perhaps you could oblige me with a mouthwash. No problem. You will not be able to see, but your hearing and your speech will be unimpaired. Now, Mr. Geller, as we are both men of science, I will not mince words. We know that you have highly developed powers of telepathy. So tell me if you are able to read my mind or deduce by any other means the image on which I am concentrating my entire will. Your mind isn't clear to me. It's clouded with images you're subconsciously trying to repress. But I, I think the object you're referring to is a, a living creature. A small mammal, if I'm not mistaken. So how do you deduce that, may I ask? By reading the mind of Lieutenant Jones. It's like an open book. You better watch out, my dear, or Mr. Getter will be asking you out to dinner tonight. Well, I'm sure... I smell a rat. This truly remarkable perception. It is indeed a rodent. And a very dangerous specimen at that. In fact, it is a threat to humanity. It is the carrier of bubonic plague. Now, Mr. Keller, we know that you can erase magnetic tape. So let us see if you can erase life itself. What's up, Doc? Can't the US Army afford a rat trap? That's the problem, Mr. Geller. All I'm asking you to do is stop the creature's heartbeat. I just can't do it. Can't or won't. And think carefully before you reply. You are being monitored by a lie detector. Mr. Geller, please, a rat is a rat. Millions of them are destroyed every day in the interests of science. Well, I've never attempted anything like this before. But I'll try. Dead. Excellent, Mr. Geller. The experiment is half over. You will be out of here soon. <laughs> I want out now. Mr. Geller, I'm asking for five more minutes of your time at $500 a minute. Five minutes to do what? Uh, analyze my thought waves so you can process them to destroy life at the touch of a button? Far more humane than the nuclear alternative, Ari. I see from our data bank. A strong reaction from your olfactory nerve system. What is it? Fear. I, I smell fear. Go on, Mr. Geller. It's a human being you've got there. No, it's vermin. More vermin. Another rodent. And in its way as great a menace to society as that plague-infected rat whose heart you stopped a minute ago. Uh, tell me more. The subject is a criminal, awaiting execution on death row. He's a killer, a mass murderer, who walked into a fast food emporium and gunned down 28 people. Mothers and their small children, old people, teenagers, school children, an entire family. All innocent victims of one man's insatiable lust for blood. Put him out of his misery, Uri. You'll be showing him more mercy than he ever showed those poor people. Stop his black heart. And then you'll let me go? Yes, then you are free to go. 
I'll be paid now on the spot. Your check is signed and waiting. And so is your limo. in trouble, I could feel it. And then, when I got into the house, I knew I was right. electronically locked and only we hold the code to the release mechanism. And no way he can get it off. Not scalping himself. It was the same story at the lab, like a bull in a china shop. Files of data ransacked and all the records of experiments with Yuri destroyed or missing. I shouldn't have let them take him away. What do you mean? Well, they offered us four grand for a brief consultation at the special research facility. Oh. That's the place where they interrogated Joe last night. Do you have a magnifying glass and the map of this area? I'm afraid Uri is in big trouble. He's driving down a hill. For some reason, he can't see clearly. Then he must have gotten out of the research facility. It's the only hill for miles around. Look out, Uri! Oh my God, he doesn't even have a license. How fast would you say he was going? Too fast. I don't know, um... 35, I guess. Well, when he comes to a T-junction at the bottom of the hill, he should turn left. But if it's a red light, he shouldn't pass go. What is this, Monopoly? Shh. OK, Uri, get ready to hang a left. Now. Any second now, he will be approaching an intersection. He should carry on straight over. OK, Uri, there's an intersection coming right up. Keep on going. I'm pretty sure he has the right of way. Oh, no, Uri, look out! I guess I was wrong about the right of way, huh? Another one like that and I'd be dead of a heart attack. What are we doing? Fine. We've got him as far as South Street without a scratch. If we can get him to the traffic circle, he can make it. He's got to make it. Can't be much further to the traffic circle. Then you better take exit three. OK, Ori. Use the circle. Exit three, then? Yeah. No, sweetheart. You must mean exit four. Well, darling, if you want to bring him back without loss of life or limb, it must be exit three. Guys, make up your minds. Sweetie, it must be exit four. Because that exits onto Park and a road. And then you've got to see on the right, and he doesn't get on the traffic gas before you go over the bridge. Fellas, please. Three. Four. Four. Three. Four. Four. Four it is, Uri. You remember West Park Drive and how quiet it is? That's why we sent the kids to school there. And school's out. Break, Uri, break! Did I miss lunch? I think we need a degaussing device. I think we should send for a locksmith. I think we should amputate. Huh. Maybe I should just have dessert and go back to death row. Maybe you're crazy. They'll keep you there for life. Maybe Shippy should go with him. 
Oh, I'd love to, Mrs. Hartman, but I'm still digging for water. Water? What we need is a blinking miracle. I'll take care of it. Hannah. You said that if anyone came across the other half of that ring, you'd really like it back. Well, here it is. Never meaning to send. With these eyes before Just what the truth is I can't say anymore Cause I love you What a shame we haven't got a honeymoon suite. Oh, I'd be quite happy with a sofa bed, Mrs. Hartman. Well, just until I've organized fresh accommodation. What do you say, darling? Fascinating. Absolutely fascinating. Good morning. Being telepathic, I really don't need this. It's just for the sake of propriety. But this, you must see. Get out. And is Gilbert passed his microphone over that pile of scrap metal. He activated this tiny little tape recorder in his jacket pocket, which transmitted a pre-recorded tape of all those clocks and watches you heard. This cunning little device was later discovered when the hippie-loving fraud underwent a routine security check upon leaving the building. Oh, you could see it here on his blow-up. Bullshit, that's a radio mic for oh, I'm fitting me up we with. Had thousands of phone calls of clockwork success. But that was your power, not his. Come on, Ori Geller. You tricks. They may go down big in the back streets of Tel Aviv, but they cut no ice here in the U.S. of A. And if you're watching, it's some hideout in the boondocks, Ori Geller, and I know you are. Give us a sign of your powers now. That's right. Accept the challenge from Don Drake and the millions of true blue Americans who watch this show that dares to tell the truth. Show us a sign of your powers here and now. Oh, shoot. I, I mean, we, we lost power. Oh, hold on. I, I, somebody turn on the lights. I can't see. I can't see. Two tickets to Mexico City. No. No, leave the return open. Do you have a flight that leaves around noon today? What's going on? Two p.m. First class. Mexico City. Kitty and Joseph Hartman. H a r t m a w n. Well, darling. I think they might find the bare legs a bit tempting, darling. The mosquitoes? No, the Indians. What is this? A safari? Fine. Yeah, pick them up at the airport. <sighs> Time to fade into the undergrowth, Uri. The headhunters are on the warpath. So you're running away? to fight again another day. For years, I've wanted to research a hallucinogenic mushroom used by the Hinchy Indians in their religious ceremonies. Now may be the perfect time to do a little field work. You need any porters? Sorry, Uri, we're, we're traveling light. So while you're tripping out in the jungle, what are we supposed to do? Well, you could join Shippy in the garden digging for that spring you predicted, or it might be more profitable to dig out your return tickets to Tel Aviv. Hope you haven't unpacked, honey. What do you mean? Hi, Joe. Go get yourself some breakfast. Well, at least we did it. Did what? Did what we set out to do. Revolutionize science. We did nothing of the kind. What? They haven't left us a shred of evidence. And without documentation, we're dead. But that doesn't change the fact that you have extraordinary powers. You just have to find a way of channeling them into something productive. 
That would be proof enough. We struck oil! We struck oil! <laughs> That's right. My belief in Uri's powers had kept me digging. And when I finally struck oil, Kitty and Joe became instant millionaires. It was their land, after all. Everybody was thrilled, and even more so when Uri and Hannah got married. After their honeymoon, I helped Uri prospect for other things, like diamonds and gold. His powers became legendary, and he became extremely successful. At the same time, he worked hard for world peace, and in his mind, these efforts continued into the next century. Joining us now in the Olympic Stadium studio, live from Sydney, Australia, is Uri Geller himself. Uri Geller, the man who introduced spoon bending as a sport and brought it to international prominence. We've invited Uri to the festivities surrounding the first Olympic Games of the 21st century in order to conduct a special event just for the children of the world, using their psychokinetic powers. So kids, get those spoons ready. Uri, over to you. Kids, I know you've all been waiting to bend spoons with me, but just put that aside for a second. Now we finally got together to use our psychokinetic energies, and that's, that's great. But I think we should use our powers to have the kind of world we want, right? And for that, we need everyone. So what I want you to do is get your parents and your cousins and your brothers and everyone in front of the TV. Now for the sake of world peace, we're going to neutralize the nuclear weapons that threaten us all. So everyone, wherever you are, all over the world, I want you to concentrate. All two billion of you. Now look into my eyes. Now I'm gonna count to three. And then we're all gonna say the word disarm over and over again, really willing it to happen. And it can happen. You could make it happen. One, two, three, disarm again. Last time, concentrate. One, two, Three. Disarm! 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 She packed my bags last night, free flight. Zero hour, 9 a.m. Hi, I'm Uri Geller. Yes, I'm the real Uri Geller. And now, let's have some fun. Please, Pull out all the broken watches that you brought with you, and broken clocks, and broken house appliances. Now, this is what I want you to do. Hold the watches and the clocks in your hands like this. By the way, if your watch is very old and it has a wind there, then please quickly wind it up. Now, place the watches and the clocks in your hands like this. And for the coming few minutes, I want you to be totally open-minded. Now, this might look silly, ridiculous, maybe comical, but it does work. So, this is the experiment, and you have to believe in yourself, because it's going to be your powers that will fix your broken watches. Now, on the count of three, together with me, I want you to shout the word work. That's all. But when you do that, when you shout work, you have to believe in yourself believe that your own power will penetrate these broken watches and clocks and fix them. Are you ready? Let's do it. One, two, three, work! Come on, everyone. After all, they're your watches. Let's do it again. One, two, three, work! Very good. And one last time. And this time, really believe in it. One, two, three, work! Now, be quiet, open your hands, and look at the face of your watches and clocks. If you have a second hand, look at it. Is it moving? If you don't have a second hand, lift the watch and the clock to your ears and listen. Is it ticking or is it humming? 
Now, if nothing happened to you, don't be disappointed because it doesn't happen to everyone. It also doesn't happen all the time. But if your watch or clock or your broken house appliance is working now, please let all your friends know. It's really important for me. Now, before I leave you, I want to touch you. So please get up and come, come to the screen and put your hand on mine, like this. Feel the power, feel my power, feel the energy. It's flowing through your body. Let your mind go. Send it out there to the universe. Connect with the cosmos. And right now, connect with every human being on our planet. Send them love. Send them health. And send them peace. And right now, trigger your own dormant positive right now and from today your life will change for the better I feel it because you now have the power I love you all God bless you and I think it's gonna be a long long time to touch down brings me round and get to find the man they think I am at home oh. No one there to raise them If you did And all the science I don't understand It's just my job 